about the jerseys themselves yet because I could I could go on like I have not but uh, like that one down there back to the well let's, let's we're, we're right here first off for how often do you everyone knows the miracle on ice how many knew that the Sabres wore a patch for it I need and I need this jersey finding this exact jersey uh, not gonna happen I, it is a monster look, look how goofy the Sabre is the, yeah. the, the Buffalo is um, like we have proper like that's a wool sweater. That's wool. I, I, I think it's a plant. There's a one on the back. I always find it interesting too that it's only two grommets and not three. Um, these, I, first off, this is a Gump Worsley, and Gump Worsley personal hero because the guy was my shape. Like, and he, he, he said later in his career as he's seeing like people getting better and better that he's walking through like patting his gut, going like, I love those boys will be able to handle with a body on a lot like this one. But, like, I wish the NHL would go back to this as an All-Star game once. Now that the teams don't matter as much anymore, put the, put the number front and center. It's the All-Star game. Um, you look, you know, we go from, from full Doreen to, to Mesh, and Bill, you pointed this out. I think this is probably my favorite detail I've seen so far. So this had the NHL 75th patch on it for 91-92, and then they stripped it and put the Stanley Cup 100th anniversary patch for 92-93 right over top of it. And it's, and it's interesting because they, that's on ice quality. They thought that's, that yeah, was that's the, the actual one. I mean, look, thing to do. Repairs and everything. It's like, no, it's all right. It's a, it's a uniform. Go to work. There's, that, there's the patch you're talking about. Yeah, yeah the 75th patch. Yeah, I did those over here. Billy Smith's patch and everything. Like, how cool is this? How cool. Yeah. Way to go. Way to go. We can't take him anywhere. It's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. Look, I just talked about Billy Smith's pads. All right, all right, fine. And then here we have the best cop on the force. I'm not going to touch. I lie. I'm gonna the touch number that. one cop. But look, the number one cop on the force. But I mean, look, look how much bigger those pads are. I mean, just it's such a difference over the years. <laughs> so we have a big flyers thing. We'll go around. But I noticed this one from across the room because it's missing this bottom stripe. There should be a stripe here. They wore this the year with the Cooperalls. They had no hemline stripe the year with the Cooperall, so it went straight into it. So what a what a piece that is and to collect that. I photo matched it to the stripe. Did you? Yeah. They just cut and chopped it off. Yeah, oh, I, I knew NHL uniforms, they, they had that. But like, was so short, but he was such a big guy. Like, some of them were like half shorts. That's crazy. That's fun. Yeah. So, was he wearing the Cooper Alls in the picture? The yeah. pants? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's such a cool piece. And I know from, it's from that year, and now that we're bringing them back and, and playing with that, that's that's cool. Um, I also see, is that the, the Kelly Lindbergh Memorial patch on the top? You can see it's not even a, a circle patch, it's just a number stitched on it. It's really last, last minute thing. Yeah. 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 As much as I love to hate you, so I'm from, we're born and raised in Pittsburgh, but like it's a healthy respect of the, the Broad Street bullies. 
and the, the little because I mean they always look the same all the time. But it's the little details of, of white seas and where a stripe is. And, you know, it's little itty bitty things, which I imagine it comes to black is not easy. Oh, are these the these the ones they wore in warm ups? No, that's just the these the. the Pro shop sold them. It's actually sweatpants. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I just bought them as a joke. It's you know. a nice, it's a nice backdrop. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. Had me full. The real ones are gigantic. They're, 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 yeah. So yeah, they I imagine. Much of them. They auctioned those off. They wore them for um, with the reverse retros last year. Yeah. And then they auctioned them off. That's awesome. What a cool collection. Thanks for Thank you. Yeah. Is that the Stars jersey? This is the this is North Stars. What, remind me, was it? Well, Dallas? so are we filming? So this, the North Stars switched for the last two seasons. They switched to this. So for the ninety one, the ninety ninety one season, no, yeah, ninety ninety one. Um, they wore with no ninety one ninety two. It's the seventy fifth. And then they have the 25th All-Star patch, which I have one of these, and I didn't think that this big was right. I love in there that Mike Madonna is on it, which is why my one of these is going to be a Mike Madonna jersey, so it's here and on the back. When they moved to Minnesota, they, or when they moved from Minnesota, they put the Dallas, uh, the, the state of Texas here. And then after two seasons, they added Dallas across the top. So it's the ones without the stars that you, you want. You need it without the, the stars, and then you need it without the patches, and it's actually a Minnesota North Star. That's the one. The last year of it, the Stanley Cup 100th anniversary patch. Change your life. You can actually see that they changed the fabric in that time. It went from Doreen to Airnet. Yeah. So this this is the one that you want. This that that is, is the last North Stars jersey. Yeah. Not the not, not the most people would know it by looking at it. Yeah. I also have one more thing that North Stars has. We we pointed out. <laughs> that it's there's not a third layer of black here. Like I always thought the black outlines were another layer of twill. No, they just stitched it with black thread. Like and on the back, I mean the Bellows, he's he's the he's the best. He's the best. Brian Bellows. Um, look, it's 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 all just black stitching. Even on the crest, it's just black stitching, which you're not gonna find that on a replica. But the real one, the real one was just stitched. And then I love this. The Baltimore Bandits, which we, we had to look. I was wrong. It's AHL. Um, two years, and the attention to detail of getting the gradient the same in the, the nameplate. Name like, the how? Like that. How do you make that? And that look, I, you don't want it. There's, there's damage. Yeah. <laughs> I, I should speak to the owner of this. Let them know that their jersey's damaged. <laughs> Appreciating more and more about a convention like this, being my first one, I didn't know what to expect, but you have collectors here who specify in one, maybe two players, and this is a great example. Sean McMorrow, journeyman minor leaguer, who made the show for one game with the Buffalo Sabres. They wore the um, the red thirds that game, but he's got a uh, preseason gamer from them. But in talking with the gentleman, He's got contact with him. He's, Sean knows him as the Sean McMorrow collector. Um, and just being able to say that, like somebody's reached out to you who actually played in the jerseys that you're currently owning and putting on display, that's cool to me. That's that's something that, that you know, it's kind of the reason why you do this, but also not the reason why you do it as well. But that acknowledgement makes, I imagine, a lot of people feel good season before the lockout, the Buffalo Sabres come out in the last home game of the season, going from goat heads, black and, and red and white goat heads, show up on the ice in the last game of their regular season at home, right before the lockout, and these guys, fans go nuts. Um, there's only one of these for Zitnik, and this guy's got it. Um, 
looking at it, it looks no different than what the Sabres wore before the goat heads and what we've moved back to. But the fact that this came from that actual game itself, one time, one off, uh, completely forgotten about because of the lockout the following year. Um, there were thoughts about going back to this, and they did, but they did go back to the Navy or introduce the Navy as opposed to the. Uh, I think the Bears was the most impressive one, in my opinion. The one you don't have. This is the Winter Classic jersey. But this is 2008, the Winter Classic jersey. Not many people do have this. No, it's only, the, as you said, they never put these to retail. Um, so to actually have the Reebok collar and with, with the laces. With the laces. That's where um, mine falters. And interesting, it's not even Reebok material. It's standard CCM airnet. Like, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. So, like, this doesn't exist other than what, and actually it's Paul Dawson, and that's an impressive player to have. Like, you know, At that time, yeah. But, like, the, yeah, like, to have this, like, this is the only way you're... It's actually a movie-worn mystery Alaska jersey, and uh, from one of the collectors that's here, Larry, Larry over there, uh, helped me get this. Uh, my favorite number's 19, so... Um, when I told him I wanted the Ben Winneka jersey, he said, does he even have a speaking line in the movie? But, uh, <laughs> but this is good. It's got a lot of nice wear on it from being outside and rust and And a proper kind of sweater. Thing. Like, I didn't realize they were sweaters in the film. Yeah. And then this uh, Gretzky jersey was actually prepared for Wayne to be in the Mystery Alaska movie, but the scheduling conflict, he couldn't come. So this is a team-issued jersey for Gretzky by a fake New York Rangers team. <laughs> and then... Over here, these are three jerseys worn in the movie Goon with uh, Sean William Scott. This is from the Assassins, his first team when he started playing, and then both of these are teams that they played uh, while he was in the Maritime League playing for the, uh, the uh, Highlanders. And uh, I checked, and all these jerseys actually have screen time, so you can see them. Now, so. Such a cool collection. Thank you. Thank you. We're in a place with so many old jerseys. I mean, we got the old Christmas Devils jerseys. We have the Colorado Rockies jersey, which how crazy the NHL jersey is it's screen. I brought down jersey. I want to steal the pink. I do not believe it. Saw this from across, or actually just like a shoulder from across. It's the Kansas City Scouts. Two years of this. That was it. It's made by Wilson. It's a 48 foot high outlet. Look at. Look at all the details. Not even a circular crest. It's actually oblong. And then look at all the, the damage done in the sleeves. How cool is this? And when you have Wilson, who made the jerseys, and then Gunzo, clearly, is whoever did the customizing on the back to have multiple tags for this stuff. This is just a, it's a bygone era. Bygone era. So in the game worn stuff, we've had lots of questions about kiss cut and how the numbers are done. Because numbers are typically multiple layers, right? There's a red layer on a gold layer. Like that's how you expect it. Or, you know, here, it's a white layer on a red layer on a black layer. Kiss cut is the opposite, where you have an outer layer on top. Like the black is the base layer there and the silver is on top. Um, there was another one here, uh, Capitals. It feels like that the white is the base layer and the blue is on top. And yeah, it's blue. It's a Capitals jersey, Phil. They wear blue. Here, I'm not even convinced that that's a layer of fabric, that that's just stitched. Um, and then I wanted to point out what Phil noticed, because we talked about this with the, the throwback. That's actually puffy. There's actual volume to these game-worn jerseys. Like, that's actual cushioning in there. So we've been seeing this on uh, throwback jersey. Buffalo really started. Look at the stitching in there on the one. Like, it's just to keep it on there, on this wool sweater, which is also so tiny. Um, also, I mean, look, look at the thickness on that stitching. Or look at the Bernie Puma. Look how big the thing on the one is. Look how ridiculously shaped it is. And it's just here, and you can just. Actually, I don't know that I've seen this many colors in one number before. Like that is, that is red with a blue stitch on white with a red outer stitch. 
Man. I came over here just because I wanted to touch a Ken Dryden jersey because it's Ken freaking Dryden. Um, but the, the fabric, like I knew it immediately. That If you remember the old Mitchell and Ness, before Fanatics took over Mitchell and Ness, they had a really weird fabric to it. It's very thick. Like it's hot. Um, it's exactly that fabric. Like to Ken Dryden in the 1970s, it's exactly that. Now the numbers are tiny, but like that's what that is. And I think that's extremely cool. Look, we all know about the stitching. I mean, it's Matt Fair. Everyone who doesn't love it. And we talk, we'll talk about the importance of it. But even on Adidas, this game worn, that's printed. Now, it, it's thick. It's very thick. But it's still printed. And a little rubbery? Interesting. Wouldn't have expected. There's a lot of game worn jerseys here. But how about a Quebec Nordiques jacket? Great as that one. I want that as a crest. 35 years ago. Not 30, not 40, but 35. So a lot of great new ones, including the brand new stadium series. Did you sell them all? Well, there's, there's your moot millionaires. There's stadium series for the Rangers. Um, here it is. Here's the Islanders just worn. Like, that just happened. Um, but I wanted to look at the thing we all know is the worst. It's even worse than you thought. Because look at the game worn and how the stripe is coming through the numbers. It's also kiss cut. That's that's the the blue is on top. But like how bad bad jersey gets even worse. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, and one more. How many of you have even seen this one? First off, chromy chrome. Look how thick that stitch is. I had no idea. Oh my god, you, yeah. You'll never see it anywhere ever again other than in this room right now. That's something. And there's millions of dollars. Yeah. Like so, you know, a lot of this stuff should be in the hockey hall of fame. Right. But they only can display so much anyway, so people might as well enjoy it, right? right. I mean that's unbelievable. Um, I came in here with super low expectations. Like I figured this was gonna be a couple tables and be a bit like the amount of stuff here, how ridiculously rare and old some of this stuff. I mean, I've, I've touched 40 Howland Penn driving jerseys today. Like, what? Um, going to the hall and like salivating at those things. There's a reason why they the have glass, behind glass, like, right? you from grabbing like, it. Like, absolutely. And here you just come and they just, oh yeah, just, just pick it up. And, like, this this was so cool. This was beyond anything I imagined. I, I loved it. I had, and, and a lot of good conversations yeah. too. Like, and people complimented us about, oh, how'd you know so much about Jersey? Like that. The, the thought process here is that you have people who are so specific about their collection, they can tell you anything about the players or the game that they played in or who they fought in that game. Like, they know, and it's possible that they've met these players. And the players know them. Demanded so their guys. jerseys. Yeah, what? What you know, we're talking about how like, it was his only jersey from that team and he wanted, like, you know, could he get it back? He doesn't have one. And yeah, they traded for it, and he got a, a championship jersey with a nice inscription on it. It, it. What a cool experience! This is different than anything I expected. So much better. Like this was this was outstanding. Highly recommend. Yep. Phil. All right. Well, he's Shrems. I'm John. Phil. Take us out. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Ring the bell. You get notifications when we have new videos get posted. And come back for another episode of Ugly Thirds. Come do one of these. This is so cool.